Okay, here we go. This is going to be my comprehensive review of The Sims 4 for rent. Name's not great, but the pack is decent, and I've had early access to it for about a week now, so I have many, many thoughts. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything that comes in the pack, and also let you know whether or not I think it's worth buying. Quick disclaimer, I was given early access to this pack through the EA Creator Network. I'm not being paid to talk about it, there's no money exchanged, I just got early access so I can make videos on it for you. They gave me a second version of The Sims 4 in my library that just has the base game and the new pack, and because of that, you're gonna see a couple weird things in the game footage. There's a watermark floating around the screen, and also this version of the game doesn't have access to the gallery. And also, this is not final software, so things may change when the pack officially releases next week. And the other big disclaimer is that they're running a new creator code test again starting today. So if you buy any Sims pack, not just this one, but any Sims pack, and use code LILSIMSY at checkout, I will get a tiny percentage of that sale. Obviously, I would never suggest that any of you buy anything that I don't think is worth the money. And in fact, I would encourage all of you to wait for packs to go on sale before you buy them because by default they are very, very expensive. But for the sake of transparency, I feel like I should bring up that they did start that program again today. The timing of all this makes me feel kind of weird because I don't want you all to think that I'm trying to like get you to use my code and buy the pack and give you a fake review. But I swear I am not some evil supervillain. I don't want you to waste your money on a bad pack. That's why I'm making this review and showing you everything and talking it all over so that you can make that call for yourself. So with that being said, let's jump straight into the review. I'm going to start by walking you through all of the biggest new features, and obviously the main thing here is rentals. So they've added a new residential rental lot type, and that's where all of the main gameplay lies. By switching to this lot type, you'll be able to build, rent out, and also live in new rental units. I kept jokingly calling this the landlord pack because based on the trailers, it seemed like a lot of the gameplay was surrounding running a rental property, but you don't have to be a landlord. You could just be a tenant and you can also use this in alternative ways. You don't have to be some big time landlord. You could just rent out an area of your Sims house to their grandma or to their sister. So you could instead use the feature to have more of your Sims extended family all living on the same lot as you. And that's probably more how I'm going to use this pack in the future. I don't really have any desire to be a landlord, but. I do like the idea of sharing a single property with my Sims family or their friends. I really like to play legacy challenges and I always have like all of my Sims family living together, but we only have eight household slots. So there's not always enough space to have everybody all living together. So I really like the idea of having the grandparents live next door or like live out back in the guest house. And then I can just switch between the households instead of having to keep everybody all together all the time. So here's how it works. You can adjust any lot now to a new residential rental lot type, and then you'll individually assign rooms rooms to different units. So maybe for some reason I want to set Eliza Pancake's room to be a separate unit. I can assign her room, maybe her bathroom, and like her balcony to number one. And then I could choose to make Bob's number two and create a second unit and then have the rest of the house be shared. Right now number one is set to the home unit, so when I come out of build mode it's gonna hide the other unit and then I can see my space and all of the shared spaces still. And now the game is classing this room as its own lot, so I have to travel through a loading screen to visit that area area. Currently nobody lives there, so I can go pretty easily. And I realize this seems very strange to have to go through a loading screen to get into the other bedroom of this house. I think it feels especially weird because we're just in one single house right now, but you could build a massive apartment with like six units and eight sims in each unit, and then it starts to kind of make more sense by many of these loading screens. This is unfortunately just a limitation of The Sims 4. The game is seeing this as being its own individual separate lot now. It works very similar to how city living apartments work. I think the loading screen concept sounds bad, but after playing with it, I think it makes sense for gameplay just for things to run better and load faster. So by default, you can have a max of six units on one lot, but with cheats, you can have basically as many as you'd like. The cheat is bb.increase rental unit cap on. For some reason, the actual cap is 99 units per save, and you're able to split up those units however you want. So you could build like a 10 unit apartment building in Willow Creek, and then have a two unit building in Oasis Springs, and then kind of split up your 99 across all the different worlds. This limit seems kind of weird to me, like I don't really understand why it's there, and I assume it probably has something to do with performance. If you've got all the packs, that splits up to about four units per world, and I don't think that's too unreasonable. That's probably the most I'd ever do anyway. It is kind of annoying to have a limit when you're using cheats, but I did try to test this out, and it did not go that well. They've really optimized the game for six units per lot, obviously, and when you try and push past that, it kind of struggles. I built 99 on just one lot to try and test it 
out and the game could barely run. It was actually completely fine in live mode, but in build mode, the lag was unbearable. And I guess that makes sense. That's why they have the loading screens and stuff in between the units. But this is just not something I'm gonna be doing every day. For the most part, I'm probably gonna end up building three or four unit places. I'm picturing myself mostly building and playing in townhouses or like smaller unit situations, and then maybe occasionally building huge apartment buildings, but I don't really see myself playing in that stuff all that often anyway. For the most part, this pack is really geared towards building stuff on a smaller scale. Like they're sort of intending you to rent out basements or like have a duplex unit and have someone living next door. And that's what it's optimized for. It's not really optimized for building like high rise type buildings. The fun thing though, is that you can kind of use it however you want. You could rent out a single room in your own home. You could build an entire apartment complex. There's a lot of creative freedom here. And that is exactly what I was hoping for. There are a few lots that you can't build residential rentals on. You can't make them in vacation worlds like Batu or in any secret lots, which doesn't really surprise me. But for some reason, you also can't build them on any of the beachfront lots in Sulani, and you can't do it on penthouses in San Myshuno either. I'm kind of disappointed by that, and I don't really understand why you can't. The penthouses make a little bit more sense to me, but I don't get the beachfront thing. I only had the base game and for rent here, so I couldn't test it out, but they did confirm that and post it publicly already. After you finish building the rentals, now is the time to set up unit rules and then find tenants. There's a pretty cool tenant application menu where you can see everyone's budget and the number of people in their households. You get more info once you actually pick the tenant, but at first you only see very basic info and ages. You can customize a lot here too between the rules and the lease length. You can set the daily rent price anywhere from zero dollars to a max that's based on the value of the lot. So you can't be like a horrible landlord. You can't like massively overcharge for no reason. There is a max based on how much your lot costs. I really like this because I think for me, I'm probably gonna have free rent most of the time because I don't really wanna make money off of my Sims grandparents living with me, but I do still want them to be there for the story. I just can't see myself using the landlord feature the way that it's intended. It's, it's just not interesting to me. So saying that, when it comes to being a landlord, you've got a few important tasks. Basically, your goal is to keep up maintenance on your units, and that includes having regular maintenance checks, but also handling emergency events. So there's a ton of different maintenance events that can occur, and they are all really chaotic. I sort of assumed that it would just be basic stuff, like fixing the plumbing or the stove breaking, but there's also hauntings. There was a plant disease that I had to solve. So there's a pretty wide range of different maintenance stuff for your Sims to handle. You'll have all those same things as a tenant. It just won't be your problem to solve. You can fix it yourself or you can call the landlord and have them come deal with it. These are tied to the rental lot type, but there is a new lot challenge. So you can add these to any regular house. Keeping up with all that is going to help your unit star rating. And obviously the higher star rating, the better off you are. There's a handful of things that affect the quality of your rental. That includes the size, the amenities you offer. So that could be things like the appliances or, or different special stuff like hot tubs and telescopes and things. The environment counts towards it. So like the decorations that you've added, and then obviously also your maintenance level. If your tenants are upset with you, they might revolt. And maybe I'm just an awful person, but I actually had this happen to me a few times. The first time was in that 99 unit build. So that kind of makes sense because I, I was doing a bad job. But the second time it was my Sims granddaughter. She revolted against her own grandma. And when that happens, you can try to reason with them and then promise to do a better job so they calm down. I don't really know what happens if that doesn't work or if you don't try to help them, but I cannot imagine it would be good. If they break any rules, you're able to find them. And I've never actually successfully managed to convince anyone to pay my fines. You can send them letters and you can also talk to them in person to try and demand payment. And this one lady, she refused every single one of my attempts. And then when I talked to her in person, she literally laughed in my face. If they refuse to pay your fine, you can evict them. So in game, you can both justly and unjustly evict people. In this case, the game would class it as a just eviction because they broke the rules and then didn't pay the fine. If you try to evict Sims that haven't done anything wrong, they will hate you. And it also says something about maybe you having to pay a fine or like legal proceedings. I haven't seen that yet because I think evicting people is wrong. So I felt too bad to try, but um, I will say that I, I did evict the lady who laughed at me. And then if you're playing as a tenant, you have all of that same gameplay just sort of in reverse. So for example, if your landlord sucks, you can choose to start the revolt. It's actually kind of fun and all of the tenants in the building will come out and protest with you. You'll obviously still get maintenance events as a tenant, but you can also have like community events that happen. I kept getting one for a building wide charity drive. Nothing really happened from this aside from me just going and fishing and then putting the fish in my mailbox and then checking off the box that I did it. But it is kind of cute to like pretend that there's some sort of building wide charity event happening. I'm sure there are other events too, but I only got the charity one like four 
four or five times. It just kept popping up. I keep thinking about alternative ways to use the pack that are not really about being a landlord. And the tenant stuff is really, really fun. I can see myself having almost every single one of my Sims live in a rental lot at some point in their life. It's just so normal and so realistic. Like everybody lives in lots like this in real life. I have been wanting a feature like this for 10 years. Like ever since we first got The Sims 4, I have wanted this. So I know I'm gonna use this so often. This is everything I have ever wanted for The Sims 4 and more. But while we're talking about tenants and landlords, this is probably a good time to introduce the new traits and aspirations in the pack. So this one comes with four new aspirations and all four of them are kind of weenie aspirations. Most of the new aspirations coming in packs recently have been kind of small and they're all just basically tutorials for the new pack content. Playing with four Sims, I managed to finish all four aspirations in one week in game, seven days. I guess that's maybe a good thing because it gives you a chance to finish multiple aspirations and get multiple reward traits. But it's kind of weird because I still think of aspirations as being like a lifetime goal. So it's really strange to finish a lifelong goal in one week in game. So there's a discerning dweller aspiration. And this one is basically about being a good renter and a good neighbor. It kind of just walks you through the different aspects of being a neighbor, like meeting your neighbors and fixing a maintenance event yourself. There's a five star property owner one, which is basically a landlord tutorial. It's kind of like the first one just flipped around. The seeker of secrets aspiration has you snooping and spying on everybody to learn all of their secrets, which is also a new gameplay feature here that I'll get into in a minute. And the last one is Fount of Tomorani Knowledge, and it kind of just walks you through exploring the new world. I really like the idea of all of these, but they're just so simple. Like in this knowledge one, it has you using a toilet as three of the tasks. So it is cool and it shows you about the new toilet in case you didn't know it was there, but like why, why is that my lifetime goal? I don't know. It's not really a problem with just this pack. Like all of the aspirations are kind of like this recently. I don't know. I guess me and the Sims team just have different views of what an aspiration should be. There are also five new traits in this pack. Child of the Village is very similar to Child of the Island from Island Living, and it's actually a really annoying trait. It's cute in theory because it's supposed to show a strong connection to your Sims' cultural roots, but in reality, they just wake up sad or embarrassed literally every single day. Every single day, they're upset about missing their village, and I don't really understand why because, like, I live there, I was out last night at the bar, I was talking to people from there, like, I, I don't see what I was doing wrong, but every day they would have bad moodlets constantly from missing the village, so maybe it needs to be tuned or something? It's just not making much sense gameplay-wise, and if anything, it's kind of a hindrance. Speaking of wise, that's also one of the new traits, and this one is really cool because it's elder only. You can pick it in cast or they can earn it from gameplay, and this is the first time we've ever had an elder exclusive trait. I really love when they do special stuff for other age groups, especially elders, because they don't have that much that's exclusive to just them. And I think for storytelling, it's really cool to have an older Sim who gets the wise trait and can like pass on wisdom. Their years of experience allow them to naturally learn new skills with ease and their emotional intelligence reduces their angry and uncomfortable thoughts. So it's actually a really good trait. There's also cringe, which has very similar vibes to the socially awkward trait from high school years, but they're not exactly the same. Socially awkward Sims are just bad at talking to people, but cringe Sims do kind of cringe stuff. They literally constantly dab. This thing, they are constantly doing that in game. And that's sort of the joke. They're just constantly referencing old memes and, and doing stuff that people just kind of think is weird. It's actually kind of a cute trait. I, I sort of relate to it, if I'm being honest. I, I fear that I too can be cringe at times. Then we have generous, which is mostly about Sims giving money to people. It says these Sims are happiest when offering their time and money to help others. And they can give very large sums of money. I had my Sim giving her grandma $2,000 at a time. And then last we have Nosy, and these sims like to gossip, snoop, and spy. The icon for this one kind of makes me uncomfortable. I gotta be honest, I don't know if I love that. Maybe it's because I'm constantly getting mean comments about my nose, so it's a sore subject, but like the giant nose icon, it, it's a lot. I feel like I might have to start giving my sim self this trait just to get ahead of it. But it, it is kind of cute. They'll pull out these binoculars and like spy on people randomly when you're playing. I think the huge number of traits and aspirations is a big selling point of this pack. I don't know about you, but I am always wanting more traits and five is a ton. While we're talking about being nosy, that's actually one of the other big gameplay features. They like to do a new social feature in every single expansion pack and this time it's secrets. They were selling it to us by talking about living in close proximity to your neighbors and always being kind of nosy and learning their secrets. But in reality, I think this feature is kind of silly. You learn secrets about other Sims by snooping around their house and spying on them, but they don't really make that much sense. They are 
are very funny and I've enjoyed reading them and discovering them, but they're not really related to the specific sim that they're about. They're all more general and like references to sims lore or jokes about memes in the community. To give you a couple examples, this sim is jealous of the Grim Reaper. This one's a joke about how a lot of simmers kind of want their stoves to catch on fire sometimes. Feeling bleak in Willow Creek is a joke about how boring Willow Creek is now. There's a whole thing about grilled cheese. This one, this one's kind of good. This one's about the eyeball ring. There are these rings I see folks wearing around town. They're odd, to say the least. It's not just how they look, it's how they look, if you know what I mean. They appear to be looking at me, <laughs> and only me, every time I see them. So they are really funny, and I've really enjoyed finding and reading them all, but I think I was just expecting to find drama about The Sims, and instead they're just sort of randomized jokes and memes. The best part about this nosy secret feature is the fact that you can break into Sims' houses. So now you can just go to any lot and start a break-in, and then break into their home, and once you're in there you can snoop around for secrets and like dig in their drawers and stuff to find things. I'm gonna use this less for secrets and probably more often with the kleptomaniac trait so I can steal from people. One really annoying thing though is that say I go to the land grab's house to start a break-in, I'm at their front door, I click their front door to start a break-in, and then it does another loading screen to start the event. I wonder if this is maybe because they're trying to force all the sims that are there to leave before you break in. There are a lot of loading screens in this pack, but I find the break-in one really weird and a lot worse than the ones in between the rental units. While we're talking about these more nefarious gameplay features, there is one other main thing in this pack. There's two big things that I'm always hoping for in new Sims packs, and that's woohoo spots and death types. And I don't know what that says about me, but I think that the average Simmer also feels the same way. Unfortunately, this pack does not have a new woohoo spot, but there is an extremely chaotic new death. We've got a couple new lot challenges here, and one is this new mold feature. Feels strange to call that a feature, but you can turn this on and then have your sims battle mold infestations. You have to keep the house clean and like puddles mopped up, the plumbing clean, or else mold piles will start to appear. Most of this mold is just allergenic, so it won't kill you, but it will still affect your sims pretty badly. They are non-stop dazed when there's a mold outbreak, so it's very annoying to deal with. You can clean the mold piles in a few different ways. The just regular clean option will put your sims in a biohazard suit and they'll scrub it away. The mold be gone bomb costs money, but it just makes it magically disappear, and then cleaning it with fire will clean it with fire, so use at your own risk. You need to worry more about the deadly black mold piles because those are what can kill your sim. If it makes you feel any better, it isn't really easy to kill your sim with this. I turned on this lot challenge a lot, and I really didn't have that many mold piles appearing. As long as you're keeping up with cleaning, it's not that bad, so your sim isn't gonna die from this by accident. Like, it, it kind of takes some intentional behavior on your part to make it happen, and it's, it's kind of gruesome. <laughs> A lot of the deaths like this are kind of gruesome. It reminds me a little bit of the rabies death from My First Pet Stuff, and the ghosts are also kind of cool. But let's move on for a second because I want to talk about the world. I really hate to say this, but I think the biggest disappointment for me out of the entire pack was the world. It's such a shame because I was so excited about a new Southeast Asian inspired area, and there was so much potential here, but it just really didn't meet my expectations. So this is the new world. It's called Tomerang, and first and foremost, I want to make it very clear that this place is stunning. It is a beautiful world, and there's a lot of stuff that I do like about it. It's just not really what I was expecting. There's only nine lots here. It's the same size as Tartosa, and it's smaller than Strangerville. And those are both worlds that came with game packs that cost half the price. I guess if you count units instead of just lots, it does have two extra places to live in the apartments. But there's still just not that many places to build, and I was hoping for more. And that's the other problem. There's only two default rental lots. I think that is very strange given this this is the apartment pack. I feel like you would expect to see more rental residential lots here. When making these worlds, they're always trying to balance the number and type of lots that they give you, so they were probably very thoughtful in their choice to leave three empty lots for you to build on, but I think that was the wrong choice here. The world is so small, and there's basically nothing to do. We've got six lots with buildings on them. One of them is a national park, which basically just has bushes on it. National parks don't have like the playground equipment and stuff that regular park lots do, so there isn't really anything thing to do at the national park. And the other community lot is just a lounge, so there's only two places for your sims to visit. I will say there is a lot of interesting stuff outside of the lots, but there's so few lots and they're so spread out that it all feels kind of empty still. To give an example, there's a new tiger sanctuary that your sims can visit, but it's just a rabbit hole. So your sims can go there, they can click on it, they can choose to donate or to explore it, but if they go in, they just disappear and then you get a pop-up when they're done. I like the story they're trying to tell with this, but it's hard to sell it 
as a gameplay feature because there's not really any gameplay involved. The night market was one of the bigger things they were promoting in the trailer, and this is also really fun in theory, but just doesn't work that well in game. And that's sort of just due to the nature of The Sims 4, like this always happens with these kind of things they try to do. It's kind of like the city living festivals, but it's a little bit more spread out, so that makes it feel really empty when your Sims go there. You'd expect the night market to be super lively and crowded, but then in The Sims it's like four stalls and four other Sims walking around. This has been an issue with a lot of the newer worlds, and I had some similar complaints about growing together. They make these massive open spaces that have a lot of fake buildings all peppered around them, and it's fun to have the massive open spaces and big areas for your Sims to explore, but because the lots are so spread out and the area is so big, the Sims aren't concentrated anywhere, so you get like one or two Sims walking around super far apart, and then it results in the whole place feeling empty, which is kind of weird when it's supposed to be a bustling downtown. There is also a hidden area across the water. It's almost a secret lot, except it's not a lot, it's just out in the environment. And this is actually really, really cool. There's so much open water that you would assume it's fake, but your sims can swim in all of that. You can swim all the way across the water to a secret beach with a secret cave. It's kind of a weenie secret cave. This whole cave thing is in almost every pack now, it feels like. I don't care too much about it, I, I didn't find the gameplay of it that interesting, but the secret beach is cool. There's only a handful of residential lots, so we only got a handful of new townies. There's four households total that are actively living in the save, and we've met like all of them in the trailers. I do love the new townies, I'm just always wishing for more, and that's the big issue here is I just wish the world was more. But they actually did make more townies than you might think, because they made a whole bunch of new characters to be tenants. I don't know how many exactly, but there's quite a few additional characters living in the void ready for you to have them move into your rentals. And when I say void, I do mean it, like you can't find them otherwise unless you have them move in, and they really are all characters. One of them is called Dwayne the Boulder, and he's like a big muscle guy, so it's kind of a play on the rock, but it, it's the boulder. I really do appreciate that because I was expecting to have just randomly generated eyeball ring townies living in my units, so it's nice to have some pre-mades for that instead. Oh, and that's the other thing, all of the pre-made lots were built by EA. Since Snowy Escape, all of the New Worlds have had lots built by simmers that were paid to help out and build for the packs, but this time they didn't do that. I think that probably has to do with the massive new build feature. It probably wasn't finished early enough to get simmers in to work on these, so they had to do it themselves. This same thing happened with the high school and high school years. They built the high school themselves, but had simmers do all the rest of the lots. They're not necessarily bad, like they're way better than anything we used to get, but when you have creators who they're paying to spend literal weeks working on a single build, it's obviously gonna be better. I speak from personal experience when I say this process takes a very, very, very long time. I worked on Snowy Escape and Growing Together, and both of those took literal months of us working on it, and they just couldn't have given someone early access to this pack months ago because the apartments wouldn't have worked months ago, right? So it makes sense, but it's kind of disappointing. So overall, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this world. It's such a cool area, it's beautiful, but it needs like three or four more lots. Maybe even a third neighborhood instead of being split up into just two. It's also important to mention that while this world is disappointing, it is not bad. Bad is Magnolia Promenade, the get to work world that had four lots in a single tiny square. This world is massive in comparison to that, so it's by no means a bad world. I just want more. I'm, I'm just being picky because I wish that it was more, but I think that about covers all of the main gameplay features that I wanted to talk about, so let's go ahead and move on into build mode. This won't be a surprise to any of you, but building is the main thing that I was most excited about in this pack. I'm a person who spends like 90% of my sims time building, and this pack is a dream for builders. Like, I have been dreaming about this exact situation for years. Just the ability to make the rentals is the big thing, but there's also a lot of new items here. Most of the build stuff in this pack is very heavily Southeast Asian inspired. We don't really have anything else like this in the game, so it's a very welcome addition. And I feel like Sims packs usually either lean more buy heavy or more build heavy. And when I say that, I mean that some packs are more focused on furniture and others are more focused on build features like fences and columns and windows and stuff like that. I think high school years is a very good example of a buy pack to me because it really shines with its furniture additions, but For Rent is a perfect build pack. There are six new fence types with matching gates, we got two new spandrels and three new columns, there's even two new shingle types and two new roof trims, and they're both really interesting. All of the roof trims we have right now are quite plain, but these are more 3D and more designed. There's 25 new windows, but we only got three new doors, which is kind of weird. The swatches are amazing in this pack because obviously everything comes in some nice wood colors, but 
also everything comes in pastels. There are so many pastels. This wallpaper is just like a plain painted wall, but it comes in 17 swatches all of which are pretty pastel. There's also five new floor tiles. This one is my favorite. I'm gonna use this everywhere. They all come in such perfect, beautiful patterns. Like these are such usable tiles. One slight problem is that not all of the swatches match each other. And this always happens. They give us these like little decorative roof piece items sometimes, but they don't come in the same swatches as the roof. So when, like, when am I gonna use that? <laughs> it doesn't match the roof. It's supposed to, it's the same texture, but but like the colors don't match. So there's a lot of that going on with some of the items too, where they like don't come in all of the same swatches as everything else. That's not really a problem with just for rent, like all the packs do that, but it never gets less annoying. And I don't wanna make it sound like this pack doesn't have any cute furniture. I am just very excited about build mode. There is a lot of furniture and decor in this pack. First and probably most importantly, there is a new kitchen set. I'm always very excited to get new kitchen cabinets and these are very different from any of the others that we have in the game. There's a lot of wood swatches here here and this pretty cool shutter texture on the front. We also got two brand new kitchen appliances. So we have a kettle now and your Sims can use this to boil water and then make tea, coffee, or hot chocolate. I am literally never using a coffee pot again. This has just made all of the other coffee pots in the game completely useless. This one does everything, so why, why wouldn't I use it? There's also a new pressure cooker and you can cook a handful of new recipes in there. You can cook a lot less in there than I thought you were gonna be able to. It's just like five recipes and I don't know if they're ever gonna add to to it because it's probably tied to this pack exclusively, but I'm not mad. I, I like to have kitchen appliances, so I'll take it. And we got a new skinny dishwasher again, just like the one from the Home Chef Hustle pack. I feel weird about this because it's nice to have the skinnier one. It's like more realistic. It looks better sometimes than the big giant wide one, but it looks really weird in this kitchen set. It like cuts off the shutter at a weird place. So with this style of cabinet, it like doesn't look good. It looks very strange. I'm mostly going to use it on the kitchen cabinet styles where it fits better, but probably not here on this. Also, these adorable new house plans really stood out to me. There's a nice variety of sizes here and they're not too expensive. They're like 40 to 65 simoleons. We only got one new bed, but we have been spoiled in the past few packs because they all came with multiple. It is a beautiful canopy bed, very similar to my favorite bed from The Sims 3 and it costs like 1200 simoleons. There are three stunning patterned rugs in this pack and my only complaint is that I wish they had more swatches. The leafy one is kind of neutral in tone, so it's easy to use in a lot of places and the other one has some beautiful patterns. I know I complain a lot about patterns in this game, but I think they actually work very well here. There's a couple nice wall decor items, but then also a lot of stinky wall stuff. It does work here because a lot of people are gonna wanna embrace the moldy vibes and put like mold stains on the walls, but it always makes me laugh because we've got so much stinky stuff now. There are a few other standout items with some special new features. We got a new toilet type. This is a squat toilet. These are really common in Asia and we don't have anything like this in The Sims. And there's also a new toddler potty. It's like a little chamber pot. We also got a hot tub that's trying to look like rocks. Hot tubs have kind of become a meme in this community, but it's actually always nice to have more options of it. We only have a couple and this one clearly is very different looking. There's a couple new utility items as well. We've got a new water heater and electrical fuse box. Your Sims have to do maintenance on these to keep them up and running well. You don't have to use them. It's more of an opt-in thing. And if you want to have them just as decoration, they have a second version that's non-functional. So in build mode, there's like functional water heater and non-functional water heater. There's also a couple different radiators and all three of those things are very nice touches for making realistic homes. And for kids, we've got a couple new activities. There's a game of marbles that they can play, but for some reason it seems like it's only available for kids and not for anybody else. Admittedly, I don't know anything about marbles in real life, but I did think that was kind of weird. The marbles are also a new collection to complete so you can try and find them all. We've also got a new game of hopscotch and Sims of all ages can play. These are going to be such cute additions to your yards. I think I'm going to use this a lot. It's always nice to have new games and activities for kids because they can't really do that much. Debug is pretty good too. There's a lot of really nice new landscaping in Debug. A lot of the Debug plants are the same as the ones in Island Living, but we did get a handful of new ones. Lots of lush tropical stuff. I was also very excited about this huge array of new planter boxes. I'm gonna use these all the time to landscape community lots, I think. And most importantly, there are these two tiger plushies in Debug and you can get them both from donating to the Tiger Sanctuary. There is far too much build stuff to go over absolutely 
everything, so I tried to point out some highlights. And now moving on into create a sim really quickly, I should first say that I don't really care that much about cast. I don't mean that as a dig at the cast in this pack, I'm just not really a create a sim player. I am personally a lot more interested in the building in this game, so I'm probably the wrong person to come to for reviews of create a sim stuff. The biggest highlight for me here was actually the infant stuff. Partially because we don't have that much infant stuff yet, they're still really really new, but it's all so cute. We got a handful of new outfits for them and also a new hairstyle. I love all of the toddler and child stuff, they all have some really really cute swatches. My favorite is like a little banana swatch on some of the items. It's fun to have a pack that has a lot of nice stuff for the little ones. I am always desperately wanting more of that and I wasn't really expecting to see it in a pack like this, because you wouldn't expect the landlord pack to have anything targeted towards kids. This is the sort of pack that I wouldn't be surprised if it had nothing really, so I'm very pleasantly surprised. As far as adult cast goes, in general the masculine cast is kind of lacking. I say this in like literally every single review, but they just get less options than the feminine frame sims. It's not really a new problem, but it's still a problem here. Interestingly, there is a lot of overlap between the two, which I really appreciate. I'm always hopeful to get away from this masculine versus feminine separation that we have in The Sims 4. My dream is to have all of the clothing fit all of The Sims perfectly. Right now, most items fit kind of weird when you put it on the frame it wasn't designed for, so sometimes putting masculine pants on feminine frame Sims makes their hips look kind of weird and they get like a weird bulging spot at their crotch. I'm sorry for saying bulging crotch in my video, I'm just trying to explain and that's why it's a good thing that we have it work on both frames, because this way they're designed for both so they fit right on both and we don't encounter those issues. There isn't a single cast item that I dislike. I guess I don't usually have strong negative opinions towards cast, but I like all the stuff here. I also really, really love all the colors in this pack and that's been a huge theme throughout this video. All of the swatches are so beautiful, they've done a great job with the design. In particular, all of the greens and purples they're using in cast are really nice. The dresses I think are my favorite stuff in cast here, and then obviously the hairstyles are amazing. I can see myself using a lot of these hairs all the time, and in fact I think one of them is a contender for a new Sim self hairstyle. I don't think my hair actually looks like this, but it's what I want my hair to look like, so I really like it. And I think that's everything coming in the pack. So let's discuss some pros and cons. I have been desperately dreaming of a pack like this ever since the day The Sims 4 first launched. This is exactly what I have been hoping for in this game. It's going to completely revolutionize how I build and play. I've been making fake townhouses for years, and all of a sudden I can make real functional ones. I'm gonna have all my Sims live like this. I'm, I'm gonna do this all the time. So if you're anything like me and you really love building, this pack is gonna be amazing for you. If you aren't so much of a builder, you might not like it as much. I think you'll love the gameplay, but like the build stuff is for me the biggest selling point. The lack of lots in the world I think becomes a big problem for people who aren't super into building, because there's not really an easy way to just start playing. There's a couple empty apartments you can move into and become a tenant, but there isn't really a rental lot that you can buy outright to become a rental owner, so you can't immediately become a landlord without setting it up yourself. And that's not too different from like the restaurants or the vet places in The Sims 4 where you have to like build it and make it yourself, but it does take some effort on your part. It doesn't have to be a lot of effort, you could just rent out a room in your house for example, but I imagine that if you don't like to build you're gonna be on the gallery a lot for this one. And the other problem is that build mode is really really laggy. I don't know if it's fair of me to complain too much about the bugs that I saw in the CFE version, because they made it very clear that it's not the final software, so things might change when it releases next week, but for some reason placing wallpaper is unbearable right now. It's only wallpaper, but the game lags so much when I try to place wallpapers down. This is the issue with making a review in early access, because I did encounter a few small bugs, nothing game breaking, but I just don't know if they're gonna be fixed next week when it releases, but it's it's not like a big buggy pack like Wedding Stories was, like this this pack isn't broken in that way. There's always gonna be something, it's The Sims, there's always gonna be something. I'm cutting in from a different day because there actually is one other major bug that I've been encountering. For some reason, across all of my saves and all of the hours that I have played, I have never once been paid rent, and I thought that it was maybe user error and like I was doing something wrong, which is why I didn't mention it originally, but I've come to realize through some more testing that I think it's just bugs. I think there is just a rent bug and I'm not getting paid. And again, this isn't final software, so it's possible that that might be fixed when the game launches next week, but this is like kind of a big problem. That's sort of the whole point of the pack, so if I haven't been 
paid, then like, what's the point of being a landlord? I'm testing this right now, and my sim is currently in a grace period. The lease ended this morning, so I'm hopeful that by tomorrow, when the grace period ends, we should get paid. But I have tested this a lot of times in a lot of different saves and not received a single payment. I thought for a while that maybe I was supposed to request the rent money, I thought maybe it was gonna come in the mail. Some of my tenants did revolt, so I wasn't sure if they were withholding rent for that reason. Oh my god, I just, I just want to have my rent money. Yeah, the grace period just ended at 9 a.m. and now they're revolting, so see this is the problem. Is it my fault? Am I doing something wrong? Or like, am I just not being paid rent? I am owed one simoleon. Where's my one simoleon? So yeah, I feel like that was important to add in and mention here. I don't know if it's me, I don't know if it's a bug, I don't know if it's gonna be fixed when the pack comes out next week because this is early access, but I guess we'll have to wait and see next week when it officially releases. I also want to point out quickly just how important this sort of representation is to have in the game. There is a huge player base of Southeast Asian simmers and seeing their culture in the game is so meaningful. People want to make themselves in the game and recreate their own lives, so having these new build items and the furniture and the clothing and the food goes a long way. Oftentimes The Sims 4 can be kind of like a USA simulator. You look at just the last two packs and they were both American inspired worlds along with the vast majority of the others, so it's really nice for them to expand out to other regions. And look what happens when they do! We get all these amazing new items and features and styles. We really don't have anything like this in The Sims 4, so it's a huge win for everybody. Overall, for me, this pack is, I think, gonna be a must-have. I am just so excited. I keep saying this, but I have been dreaming about this for years. I, I can't believe they actually made it, finally. I think I normally have more bad things to say about Sims packs, and this has been kind of a rave review, but there's not really too much else that I can complain about here. I was near tears opening up this game for the first time because I was so excited. Maybe I'm a little bit blinded by my own joy, but I really, really liked it. So if you are anything like me and you really enjoy building in The Sims or you love the idea of your Sims living in apartments, then this pack is definitely for you. I don't really care about being a landlord, so I probably won't use that feature too much, but I'm going to be building residential rentals constantly and I think I'm going to be living in them all the time. I have all these ideas of ways I'm going to use this, things like maybe having my Sim move out to an apartment as their first home and then later down the line buying a bigger house, maybe having my Sims extended family live in my basement or like live in a guest house in my backyard, even having like two best friends share two townhouses next door to each other. There's just so many ways that I'm going to use this, it's really going to completely change how I play The Sims. It's hard to make a blanket recommendation because I don't know how you play this game and what you like to do in it, but I do think that most of you will get a lot of use out of this one. As per usual, I'd probably urge you to hold off maybe until there's a sale. Again, not a dig at this pack, just kind of a complaint about The Sims pricing in general. The Sims is so expensive that it's always better to get it on sale, but buying it today wouldn't be a bad thing. I really do think that you're gonna love it. There's obviously also a lot of other little details that I didn't cover in this video, but it's already long enough. I'm gonna be posting videos playing with this pack all week on my YouTube channel, so make sure you're subscribed here so you don't miss those. And I'm actually allowed to live stream the CFE version tonight on Twitch. They have never let us live stream this CFE early access before, but today we're allowed to. So we can literally play it live on Twitch today. So I'm gonna link my channel down below so you can come by and watch. They're letting us post early access stuff really early this time, so I've got a lot of stuff to show you before it comes out next week. And speaking of which, it officially releases on December 7th. They do give you a couple of bonus items if you buy the pack before January 18th. It's a fruit basket, an umbrella, and a grill, and they're cute, but it's not like a huge deal, so don't feel too bad if you have to hold off and then you miss out on it. I really hate that they do this, it just doesn't feel fair. I understand their intention of trying to get you to buy it now and not wait for a sale, but I hate how they're gone forever if you miss out. I just, I don't like this. But there you have it, my friends. That is my full review of The Sims 4 for rent. Hopefully it was helpful to you. My goal with these is always to explain everything clearly and give you a full picture and also point out stuff that I like, stuff that I don't like. I want you to have the tools to make an informed decision on whether or not this pack is worth spending your money on because this is really expensive, so I want you to have the tools to know what you're buying. I really don't want any of you to feel like you've wasted money, but I think I can confidently say that you will have a good time if you buy this one. And if you've gotten to this point of the video, then I am very impressed. Thank you for watching, and maybe leave a comment letting me know what stands out the most to you about For Rent. What are you loving? What are you disappointed by? And also, make sure you drop by my Twitch stream tonight because I'll be live, I can answer more of your questions there. And with that, I am finally gonna end the video right here, so I'll catch you all tomorrow, okay? Bye everybody. This might be the longest review I have ever done. The script is 11 pages.